Welcome to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast. My name is David Sims of HIPAA for MSPs and Security First IT. And joining me is Donna Grendel of Carden. Welcome to episode 297, Donna. We're getting up there. Ooh, three more. You know what happens after that? <clears throat> what? It's the end of the world as we know it. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? You know. can't do that again. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. so for those who haven't been around in a while, when episode 200 came out, <laughs> I think we titled it, what, Shutting It Down? We're Shutting It Down is the, night, is the title of the episode. Yeah, which we didn't mean we were shutting down the podcast. We meant that we were, um, it was some, some people were talking about they were shutting down their business because of yeah. a breach. Yeah. Um, and so that was the title of it because of that. And apparently a lot of listeners we all wore the worlds on us. <laughs> <laughs> Thought we were shutting the podcast down and was freaking out. <laughs> I know we got more than one comment about. Well, I'm glad to know you're not shutting it down. Yeah, talk me off the ledge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did get a call. On us. I can't go to sleep tonight. Tell me, I don't have time to listen. Because we started at the beginning, the beginning of it, just how awesome it had been, and that, that, that. yeah. <laughs> so here we are a hundred episodes later. Yeah. Almost. Still. We're doing something special for our three hundredth. You'll have to check it out. Yeah. We're gonna see. We should have where like the future a, takes us. We should have like a three hundredth episode after party on Zoom. Okay. <laughs> you set that up, brother. I, I, I was up. waiting on that. <laughs> you go ahead and make that happen there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're loving it that you're doing the videos now. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm absolutely loving it. <laughs> God almighty. So I did. I loved it when you were sending me. I'm having all these problems and I'm like, dude, I, I don't I've got, care. I've got the production <laughs> thing figured out for how we're doing it today, which is our normal setup. Well, when we met in Augusta and you and I are in the same room, cluster, just <laughs> cluster. Doing like, our pot cast. Yes, we were yuck, pot yuck. casting because our. Stuff was sitting literally sitting on top of pots to get the video cameras up high enough. <laughs> um, I know, I'm getting it, I'm getting something else after that experience. So. Yeah. And so the audio, you know, we, we were picking each other up on audio. And of course, our audio engineer is able to fix that. No problem. The problem becomes the video piece and matching all that up because I, for whatever reason, I can't take the audio that the audio engineer did and just overlay it on the video because even though it matches up initially <laughs> within 30 seconds in all of a sudden I'm speaking Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an old Bruce Lee movie. I know, and, right? And it's not matching up. And I'm like, what is going on here? And you know, I literally spent, I know you love it when I say that <laughs> six hours, like on this thing, I was finally like, you know what? I'm done. I can't, I cannot do this anymore. I am not making any problem. Every time I fix one problem, it would create another problem. <laughs> I was like, yeah, no, I'm not doing this. Um, for those of you who watch the YouTube stuff, you just have to go without for a couple of weeks. <laughs> can't, it's bad. We just can't. can't give you crap. There you go. I can give David crap, but David cannot give you crap. That's true. All right. So we got some cool stuff in episode 297. 297. We're talking about courts, cameras. And exchange. How about that? Mm, because they all of them going down the tubes. <laughs> <laughs> but before we get into all that, we do want to say Hip Boot Camp Virtual Edition in August coming up, 17 through 19. People are already signing up. You better get up in there. Go to the hippabootcamp.com yes. for more information because that's where it's at. Yeah, it's very limited. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you right now, you become friends with everybody in there by the end of it. Mm-hmm. Yep. <clears throat> so go out there, check it out at the hippo boot camp.com. Awesome. Yep. August 17th through 19, virtual. So, and we do make it a interactive virtual. It's definitely not sitting there listening to us the entire time. It just feels like it <laughs> sometimes. Never. All right. Thanks to our donors. We appreciate your support. And hey, how about this? Head on over to Facebook or wherever else and leave us a review. iTunes. We, yeah, love we need it. 
We need we it. do need it. Um, we actually had a question come in before we started recording today, and I hadn't had a chance to read it, so we're not going to answer it. I haven't seen it. How yes. did I miss that? It came in as we were about to record. So Okay. Well, then I'll look at it later. Throw that out there at you. So if you want to send us an email, go to our website, shoot us an email. We might answer your question, just like we'll probably answer this one next week. <laughs> Hopefully next week and not. I'll forget about it in months later. Uh, uh-huh. You have done that before. Yes. All right. Anything yeah. else? No, let's get her started with the. Uh, Go ahead. Kick it off. HIPAA. Say what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love doing that segment. It makes, you know, some little something, something. Yep. Anyhow, uh, I was reading the news because. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I do that a little while now and then. Yeah. 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 It's, what, it's what you do in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason when I was growing up, they always called it the library. Yeah. I didn't understand it as a kid. Now I do. <laughs> All right. So, uh, and now we have digital one. But uh, anyway, <clears throat> going back to uh, 2019. And a story, we've got a couple of stories that happened in 2019 around the same time that we're tying back to today. Wow. How about oh, that? 2019. That's like 10 years ago. No, it feels like it. <laughs> yeah. So th- this one is uh, from about June 2019. And the next one we're going to touch on something we covered in May 2019. How about mm-hmm. that? All mm-hmm. right. Let's do it. Let's Hence the, the courts, cameras, and exchange. All right, so this uh, American Medical Collection Agency. Oh, heard of them before. Yeah, we talked about them. This is uh, back in uh, June 2019. They announced uh, uh, that, uh, what is it, unauthorized user had mm-hmm. been in their internal systems between August 1st, 2018 and March 30th, 2019. Mm-hmm. A hot minute. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet you the, the date in June, I didn't go look up to be sure what the date is in June, but it would be exactly uh, 60 days from the March 30th date is my guess. <clears throat> uh-huh. Somewhere right around there. It looks like they went right down to, because they had this news, 20 over 20 million people mm. in the breach. And their business associate, so all the letters were to Quest and LabCorp and a lot of other smaller laboratories because they they were big lab mm-hmm. collections company. So they had to tell that, and um, you know what happened? What happened? A lot of stuff hit the fan <laughs> all at the same time. So their clients, uh, I think. LabCorp knew they were using them. It was like a direct contract, but Quest didn't even, I don't even think they knew because it was like they were using Optum who then hired. Uh, so they, this was two business associates down, which we tell you, you need to make sure mm-hmm. you're aware. Uh, they learned about it <laughs> just like everybody else. Wait, I'm using them. So um, they get the, the, uh, uh, 20 right at 21 million i think in nine states oh boy Uh, no i'm sorry all but nine states are involved in a settlement oh 41 states have now announced the settlement with american medical collection agency which apparently has a parent company and this is just a dba and there's some other parent company i pay attention and the uh, the settlement with the coalition of 41 state attorneys. Yeah, that's uh, a lot of pressure. And, you know, this is falling under the state consumer protection laws and privacy protection and all of those kind of things. And HIPAA. Uh, among other things, there are several regulations involved here. And, uh, you know, they what within like that same month, they filed for bankruptcy. 
all their clients left them like LabCorp and quest were like you're out we're, we you know uh it's not looking good so they're clearly a, a hipaa ba and while the state's attorneys have the they can use hipaa on behalf of their constituents I, it's not clear to me, how, you know, I, I'm used to reading the OCR ones where they're pretty canned as far as I know where to look for things. This one involved 41 states attorneys adding to the agreement. So there's sections of Connecticut. You have to do this in New York. You have to do this. But the net of it is they're agreeing to twenty one million dollars. Mm. I think is the total. But the bottom line uh, that really matters to us, you know, we always say it, it's not about the mo- 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 money, the money. I already told you. I'm not tired. About the money. <laughs> money, money. So they're, they're only having to pay a dollar per person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And remember, <laughs> they're in bankruptcy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so mm. yeah. So they, they have like they have. Uh, Basically, they have to pay the twenty one million if they don't hold up their end of this huge bargain. Hmm. If they follow all these rules, then they don't have to pay the twenty one million. It, I mean, like I said, this one's kind of it's a lawyerly or forty one states attorneys general. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of lawyerly stuff in here. Yeah, I would imagine. <clears throat> what matters to us is that. It came out with this. It it included this corrective action plan that they have to follow in order to keep from paying the 21 million. Yay. Yeah. And when you read all the stuff, I didn't even get into every single line item yet. Uh, Didn't have time, but I got into enough to say, boy, this was a mess. Yeah. It was a mess. I can imagine. Yeah. So right after the news breaks, they file for bankruptcy. This agreement says basically bankruptcy doesn't matter. Hmm. Yeah. Um, You can come on out of bankruptcy. But like there's things in here. (laughs) I mean, the first item. They must implement an information security program. First of all. That wording alone made me go. (laughs) that must be documented in writing and must contain administrative, technical, and physical safeguards appropriate to the size and complexity of the business and the sensitivity of the PI and PHI the defendant collects, stores, transmits, or maintains. So a lot of that sounds pretty hippie, hippie-ish. <laughs> hippie-ish. <laughs> it's on the hippie-ish side, uh, but, you know, collects, creates, receives, maintains, transmits, you know, uh, and that they shall permit users access to this PI and PHI only to the extent necessary for each user to perform job duties and assignments. Hmm. Maybe we call that minimum necessary. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, So these, these are things that they should have already been doing. And I'm thinking, well, you know, maybe they're just, because, I mean, they they were on their website. I remember going to look right after I saw the first announcement. And it was like, we processed one billion transactions last year. Mm-hmm. That's huge. So yeah. you say, you know, well, you know, this surely they had everything in line. Right, David? Because everybody uses them. Oh, uh, yeah. I've heard that <laughs> argument before. Yeah. yeah. Surely so, that IT company knows what they're doing. They have to be HIPAA compliant because they've got a dozen other medical practices they do business with. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. Yeah. <laughs> ask the ask the people whose IT company disappeared when they had a, a the what 20 something ransomware attacks at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then the next item was that they must employ a person who will serve the function of chief information security officer. If you're in the job of money and you don't have anybody that's like serving that function on your company and you're running a billion transactions and maybe you don't have that title, but it looks like they didn't have anybody. And it just says they will serve the function of they don't have to have the title. 
They have the responsibility to implement, maintain, and monitor the program. Mm-hmm. That's called a security officer. You're supposed to have that under HIPAA. Yep. And then <laughs> HIPAA doesn't include this, but it really should, frankly, you and I know this, uh, that they shall have appropriate training, expertise, and experience in the field of information security to oversee the program and further, further, will be charged with regular and direct reporting to the CEO. Yeah. Yeah, this is a, a big problem in smaller medium practices because well, they clearly don't... even in giant BAs. Well, it's a problem in giant BAs because they're not taking it seriously. Well, it's they not... probably think they did. Yeah, a lot of people think they do, which is mm-hmm. a big issue because even when you have somebody that says you're not doing this right, you're not following the rules you're supposed to follow. And then they go, no, we've got this covered. We're not that big of a risk. Um, come on, I know really? What you're talking about. Come on, really? I mean, yeah. It, it, at the very least, you should say, okay, let me look into that. I mean, you bring mm-hmm. up a good point. Let me make sure before I open my ignorant mouth that, <laughs> you know, that, that I actually have this covered. Because, or what is it that you think I don't have covered? Right. I would like to know. Yeah. I mean, it's just, if, if somebody were to come in my house and say, yeah, there's, there's some issues here. Yeah. Uh, You you know, there's some integrity uh, and structural issues to your house. I don't say, um, I think you're wrong. I say, well, really (laughs) show me Uh, that's concerning to me. Show me what you're talking about. I don't just dismiss it. Go, Oh no, I'm good. (laughs) Yeah. Now I'm not going to nitpick everything, but at the same time, you know, I should be able to, you know, I should, people should want to uh, evaluate, you know, cause sometimes no, you know, there, I know exactly where all the problems in my house are that scare me <laughs> where I'm like, I feel certain there's something wrong there. And that is because that's what we're supposed to be doing. And, um, so they're saying, I got to have a, somebody in charge. I got to have a security officer. That reports to the head honcho in charge and they have to be trained and 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 have some expertise in actually making sure this happens. And they need to um, report at a minimum a written report to the board and the chief financial officer on a quarterly basis. Mm -hmm. You know. You don't, if you're in a smaller entity, it doesn't mean you don't do this. It just means you do it on a smaller scale. Yeah, absolutely. Just keep that in mind. Those are, those are not unique to Mm -hmm. it's all entities based on the size you do what's appropriate for you. Yeah. And if you don't have a chief information security officer, because you're small, then, Mm -hmm. um, find, find somebody that can do that role or outsource to somebody that can do that role, but you do need somebody that understands information security. that can help you make those decisions or at least inform you of the information so that you can make an informed business decision about what you're going to do about it and then document that. Oh yeah. Cause speaking of that, the next thing says include a documented written incident response plan. How about that? Mm -hmm. Documented written incident response plan um for me i think i've said that before a time or two it sounds vaguely familiar (laughs) uh at a minimum the plan should provide for the following and i thought this was really cool Uh, i never seen it stated this way but i thought it was really really a great way to define it and we're probably going to start using it somewhere in our training uh the Provides for the following phases of response. Preparation, i.e. have a plan, test Mm -hmm. the plan. Detection and analysis. See when something goes wrong. Maybe in less than six months. (laughs) Uh, Note it and be prepared to do an analysis of it quickly. Contain it. Uh. That would make sense. Make it stop. (laughs) 
notification and coordination with law enforcement and regulators. Uh, recover. Consumer notification and remediation. And post-incident analysis. Mm -hmm. Those sound pretty much like what you would expect. And again, regardless of the size of your organization, you're going to need to do the same things. Just on a smaller scale. Yep. Those are not specific to the size. Those are specific to the case. Mm -hmm. Right. So I personally am going to use that list. It's a very good list. Cool. So everybody that says that your incident response plan is to call IT. <laughs> <laughs> Note that detection analysis containment is all their process. And if you haven't done preparation, the detection analysis containment is going to take way longer. Mm -hmm. So that seemed like, you know, pretty reasonable. Write it down, build a plan, and don't assume. It's Murphy's Law. <laughs> Murphy's Tips. <laughs> Uh, more on that later. Yeah. Uh, the, <laughs> and then this one was tricky. They have like 120 days after the agreement to do this. And then annually for the next seven years. Ooh. Yeah. An annual assessment of its program pertaining to the collection, storage, maintenance, transmission, and disposal of PI and PHI from a third party assessor annually for the next seven years starting now and then the next seven years so i had somebody in a meeting ask me how often should you really do those <laughs> well it depends do you take it seriously or not because if you're asking <laughs> yeah yeah so, so and, i mean it keeps the, the 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 requirements you know based on those requirements it says to me uh you know, they, they, there's not a lot of there there to start with. <laughs> I mean, you know, mm -hmm. and and that they're having to make sure in here that they tell them that they clearly have to cooperate with, uh, you know, they the defendant must cooperate with the attorneys that are monitoring things. Uh, I mean, there, there's a lot of things in here. Uh, and like I said, there's sections on what you have to do with New York and what you have to do with Connecticut and, you know, documentation that you have to have in there and that you have to maintain your servers in a secure manner at the locations disclosed in the confidential response of August 2020. So I'm like, huh, well, that's good. At least they're not publishing where they're locating. I mean, why does the data center matter? <laughs> and if you're going to relocate the servers, you have to tell us. And, you know, oh, and this one, this one's good right here. Where was it? Let's see. Uh, defendant shall provide notice of the proposed relocation to the attorneys general of Indiana, Connecticut, and Texas at least 10 business days prior to the relocation. Hmm. I know. In the event the defendant loses ownership, leasehold, or control of such locations of the servers are damaged, destroyed, or compromised. Sound familiar? Mm -hmm. You're already filing for bankruptcy. <laughs> 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 defendant shall provide notice and details promptly to the attorneys general of Indiana, Connecticut, and Texas. So they were worried about making sure they knew where the data was. But I think that... You know, it's like each state got a little piece of something they're going to worry about or something in the deal uh, without going through the details. But the big thing is big company, billion transactions, lots of big clients, as well as small ones who probably said, well, they do Quest and LabCorp. Yeah, they got to be good. They got to be good. Uh, so what does this teach us in our HIPAA say what uh, segment? <laughs> Whatever. So Where do we start? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's there's so many things to glean from this. You've got the fact that it's a business associate and you've got to take them seriously. You know, you could be doing the, you know, all this stuff 
in your own HIPAA compliance program and completely miss out on these business associates, uh-huh. you're not doing, you're not vetting them periodically. I mean, so, some of this stuff is getting more serious where we're starting to see some CEs that are reaching out to these BAs and saying, look, we need to see that you're taking this stuff as seriously as we are. Because well, Hicks Grimm had an update in September we hadn't even had time to cover, but we're, we're going to get back to that. Mm-hmm. Supply chain is a big, 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 big deal. And that means business associates. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's and we've said this from the beginning that there are more business associates than there are covered entities. And every covered entity has tons of business associates. And so all of your risk is not within your four walls. It's spread Mm -hmm. out over all these different business associates. And so the more you have, the more risk you're taking on, the more complex things are. And, oh yeah, you know it's it's a, it's enough work to keep up with your own program, but you know, are you even asking questions about the program of others? Yeah, because you don't want them. You work so hard and you got everything lined up, and then they, you know, you get bombed from a submarine <laughs> that you didn't know is down uh, I mean, there, like Quest. Yeah, and then you've got the other piece of this, which is not only did you have a a breach that's going to fall under HIPAA, but the states themselves can come after you. Uh-huh. So whether it's your, you might be just in one state, it doesn't matter. Every single state has breach notification laws. Every single one, all 53 of them, not excuse <laughs> <laughs> including the state of confusion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so all of them have breach notification laws. All of them have, um, some of them have even, even tougher things like uh, California and New York. They have tougher laws against, um, things like this. And, and, and it's coming, it's going to come to every single state being that tough or the federal government's going to finally get their stuff together and make some big overarching law against or, or for the protection of information because it's really getting out of hand. Yeah. And Virginia signed a new one uh, this year. I, I, I saw they pay because, you know, there every state had somebody talking about one virtually and, uh, I know it passed in a couple of states uh, that they're getting new. And so, mm-hmm. again, we can't keep up with the states. No. And, and, I, and I think the solar winds breach is going to push a lot of legislation because oh. people that were initially like, oh, nobody ever gets hired or we're good. Or, I mean, they're starting to look at it now going, wow. I mean, mm-hmm. it, even when you have a lot of good cybersecurity in place, if somebody's able to, use a third-party vendor like that, then you're never completely outside of the reach of somebody. You are yeah. always at risk. You just got to figure out where those risks are and how to deal with them. So Indeed. And you don't know when you'll get caught up in something. No. To say you don't have any risk or you're low risk, you are you are fooling yourself. Mm-hmm. There is not a single business on this planet that is low risk if you're connected to the internet. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and to say that we, you know, we have such little data, well, you know what, if you have five elements of data that are considered PHI mm-hmm. and that covers even a thousand patients, mm-hmm. you, you've got a major problem here. Yep. If you can't prove you've been doing this stuff. Yep. So it, it's definitely something that you can't just assume because mm-hmm. you know what assume means. Yep. It means you owe so me imagine. Money. <laughs> what? It means you owe me money. <laughs> uh, just imagine know. the people that, you know, these smaller lab companies, you know, they made that decision. They didn't worry about batting them. Mm-mm. You know, they, these guys are huge. How could they not have security? But you read the requirements of that. Ca- it They did not have for the size and, and complexity of their business the things they're requiring them to do should have already been in place. Yeah. And one one of the things we hear, and I've brought this up on how many times, but every time there's a big breach like this, there's always a smaller client that'll say, well, if they can't do it, how am I supposed to be able to do it? Mm -hmm. Um, And and we deal with that question quite often. And, and the answer to that is is fairly simple. They have a much more complex environment than you do, number one. So the smaller you are, the easier it is. But the other thing is you're assuming they're doing it anyway. 
<laughs> no, right. It's true. <laughs> Good and point. I, and obviously, they're not in all cases. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you're making the assumption they're actually doing it, and that may not be happening. Right. So, you know, you actually could be taking security more seriously than the bigger boys are. <laughs> right. So, you know, just keep that in mind that it's the same stuff on a smaller scale. Mm -hmm. That's really what you're doing. Just like you're treating patients or you're doing billing on a smaller scale than they are. Yep. So keep that in mind. And, uh, you know, just imagine if you uh, found out all your patients were getting a letter from a business associate you didn't even know you had mm -hmm. that has this much trouble. And then they declare bankruptcy. And, oh, by the way, there's a court case, uh, several ongoing that is trying to go through the courts to say that because these people filed bankruptcy, we can hold the upstream responsible. Hmm. So a, the man, you know, medical billing companies, uh, whatever their clients are having to fight being held responsible for what these people did because these people have filed for bankruptcy. It's not going away anytime soon. So if you were one of those small labs, you can imagine what that is. Mm -hmm. They're just hoping that LabCorp and Quest takes care of it because they got yeah. bigger, you know, pockets. But the other thing is, imagine if you're the business associate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you're caught in the middle. 41 states. That's all I got to say. 41 That's states. a mess. But right. yeah, I mean, you're right about the, the business associates that are two, three layers deep. I mean, mm -hmm. like my clients. They have no idea who I use mm -hmm. for some of the things that make me a BA. And so, you know, I sign an agreement with them and I try to make sure they're doing the right thing as best I can. Most of these are big, huge corporations like Microsoft, Google. Obviously, I can't do, I can't go in and personally look at their program. So I have to use what information that they, uh, they publish to try to vet that out. Yeah. Um, but, you know, again, my clients have no idea who all the vendors are and I don't have any idea who their vendors are. <laughs> yeah. So you never end, know. You yeah. Never I mean, know. you can only ask so many questions. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And we do the best we can to vet them and notice red flags are pretty easy to see most of the time. Yeah. But if, um, if nothing else, you want to be able to say, even if it happens to one of your downstream vendors, you want to be able to say, I have a documented program that I can prove we are doing what is reasonable and appropriate, even though this happened, we still did what was right. And we asked them to prove they were doing what's right. Yeah. Because, yep. I mean, you look at some of those people that are involved in the solar winds that went so far down. That's like five businesses below where they finally were able to get to. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's crazy. So with that, uh, that uh, that's the HIPAA part. What we remains to be seen is if we see the OCR part on that mm -hmm. specific case. Clearly, there's a lot that's going to start happening. Uh, there's a lot of things moving through the courts now because, you know, the courts just basically had to shut down for a long time and until they could figure out how to do virtual court. <laughs> I'm still laughing about the dude stuck on the couch. <laughs> 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 I just thought about that. I still the eyeballs. You can see him looking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on my assistant's computer. <laughs> you know, the sad thing is I downloaded that app and I can't get the eyeballs to do that. I don't know <laughs> how he was doing it. It's so funny. <laughs> like I <laughs> I'm here. I'm not a cat. <laughs> I saw an interview with the guy. It was hysterical. Mm -hmm. uh, the things that we've gotten <laughs> you were on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. at least he you know went in on the joke he didn't get offended that it was hysterical <laughs> okay <true>. All right. <laughs> so um uh, speaking of being on camera yeah how so, about that yeah. great segue well a lot of people are on camera and just don't know it right mm -hmm. like cameras are everywhere mm -hmm. uh, literally <laughs> sometimes yeah, hey, well yeah. matter of fact you know, we all carry around not just a camera, but an entire video studio. Indeed. <laughs> In our hands. Most of us do, you know? Yeah. 
Um, They're filming, you know, movies and stuff with those gadgets now. It's crazy. I, I know. And, you know, you, we're constantly seeing people with, you know, cameras on their house or, you know, doorbell cameras ca- capture things. And we see it on the news. So cameras are everywhere. They are, every, which is scary. I know but, they are around my house. I know exactly where they are. <laughs> I do too. I see you. <laughs> hey. Well, that's the weird thing. You know, we talked about this. This is the thing we talked about in May mm-hmm. 2019, that these cameras are everywhere and people aren't thinking about securing them. And yeah. we were talking about it, you know, is questions that came in, you know, <laughs> or we would do things and do a scan. It's like, what is what are these cameras? <laughs> you know, they're not yeah. they're What? Yeah. And speaking of uh, the, the hacker. As we go into the story, keep in mind that the hacker's name is Arson Cat. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a collective, but, eh, you know, but all they did was they're out just looking around, right? They're just out yeah. looking around. It's not like they did an attack. They, yeah. they All they did was see it and click on it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, it, it, so here's the net of it. This is a. Uh, Vercatus, is that how you pronounce it? We always have fun with names. Yeah. First of all, you're southern. Next, you're slow. <laughs> <laughs> Vercata. 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 Yeah. Cicada. Cicada. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So, um, one of my favorite sites to, <laughs> to go down into a rabbit hole. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah they uh, they just found them through the Shodan search results. I mean, we talked about it in that 202, episode 202. Mm. Wow. Isn't that a kawinky dink? Uh, I just noticed that. I wonder wonder if they listened to the podcast (laughs) and decided, let me go down this rabbit hole. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Maybe. So, But they find that this is a huge startup, 150,000 cameras when it's some ridiculous number like that Mm -hmm. that it was like hospitals uh prisons schools schools local government agencies it's all over the place and so they're like look we can get to all these cameras and they were able to access root root admin root yep Yep. so they were able to see families at home completing the puzzle Mm mm-hmm Patients at a convalescent center mm-hmm. in an ICU. Yeah. <laughs> I apparent- love the one where they've got the, this, where is this one? The, um, what appeared to be an interrogation yeah. at a police department in Massachusetts. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I, yeah. And, uh, so, it, and, uh, hospitals, uh, being in there kind of made us go, huh? We should look at that. Mm-hmm. Um, so that we know there's a lot of legal stuff going on. Uh, the FBI is involved and in all this, but the bottom line is they found it and released it. They didn't attack. They didn't, you know, what is it they're supposed to do? So this gets into a lot of the security researchers are in a very complicated place. Yeah. Um, you know, the bug bounties, Google, Microsoft, they pay a boatload of bug bounties. Uh, but you know, some of these places, they the researchers, uh, you remember on the PAX one, we just covered it again. The researchers called the places and said, seriously, <laughs> your stuff it is publicly available. And they're like, no, it's not. Um, excuse me. Your zipper is down. Seriously. <laughs> Please just fly low. You're flying low. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm trying dude. to tell you before your stuff comes out <laughs> oh, to the public, God. your zipper's down. <laughs> Okay, just letting you know. <laughs> you should probably take a look. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we don't know for sure what they did, but the, their server, uh, it and let's see, it had hard coded backdoor credentials exposed publicly on the internet. Mm, that's not good. Hard coded. Mm-hmm. That means it was written into the program. Mm-hmm. The program had it built. This is never a good thing when they're supposed to be security cameras. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. But I mean, their point is, you know, we just found it going through showdown results. Mm -hmm. We're like, look, oh, wait, look, here's this. Look, here's this. Well, any of us could do that. Uh, Yeah. And it even included Tesla, Okta, Cloudflare. Mm -hmm. I mean, huge. This thing is massive. It's going to be a big deal, just not as big as like solar winds as far as the damage, Mm -hmm. but as far as the spread. And if you have cameras, period, you need to like double check, triple check, quadruple check, never stop checking to make sure those are segmented and secured so that people can't access those and look around. Yeah. Now, and this goes, there's a couple of things I think this brings to light which is one, you should consider every single piece of technology you're bringing into your business. Every single one. I can't tell you how many times I've had clients or um, customers who they're not monthly clients, but they, they call and they say, um, we had cameras installed uh, and we need to have this app put on our device so we can see the cameras. And I'm like, uh, when did you have them installed? <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to put in last week. I'm like, this is the first time hearing about this. Yeah, yeah. You should probably get me involved in this conversation much earlier than after the fact. Mm-hmm. Um, but the other side of it too is um, what are you doing on a consistent basis to make sure that you're keeping up with either the fact that they are being updated or it, at the very least have somebody that's checking online periodically to make sure that this company hasn't had a breach because Mm -hmm. there's going to be a ton of people that are going to still use these cameras, even after this announcement's made, because they don't know what's happening. Well, they haven't even looked to see if it's secured yet. Right. You know, well, really clearly nothing was. Yeah. And so, you know, do you think as a small business, somebody's going to call you and say, uh, your cameras are breached and we can see you. I mean, Maybe I don't want that. Maybe, but or, probably you know, a lot not. of times you don't even know you're looking at the cameras. You don't even know necessarily. Yeah. You remember when we kind of stumbled on the guy laying in bed and that kind of freaked us out. We're like, we can't look at that. Yeah. But you know, I mean, how are they going to contact you? I mean, did you register uh-huh. the cameras? Probably not. Even if you did, uh-huh. you get an email. Are you going to even open it? Yeah. Um, you know, it probably goes into spam or, or you just look at it <laughs> like I do. Like, I don't have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, I mean, there's just so many issues with this. So if you're using anything, cameras or any other kind of technology, if you're, you've got to either have somebody on your staff or your IT company, you need to go to them and say, I need you to monitor these, or at the very least, uh, periodically just keep, keep a check online to see if there are any things out there, any news articles or breach notifications or anything that has to do with this company so that I know something might be going on as an IT company. We can't necessarily manage and monitor the cameras or the camera systems, but we can try to keep an eye on maybe some information. You know, we'll set up some Google alerts. If, if the name comes across or something like that, a news feed, there's something well, we can do to try to keep up with that. But even this, I mean, no alerts came out until it was like big news. Look oh, at all the cameras. Oh yeah. It's, it's obviously mm-hmm. it's, it's, um, a leading no excuse me a trailing indicator (laughs) well you know the other thing is i don't think people realize how important it is to segment those things right because these because they were able to get into the root i mean these were uh, easily could be used as a beachhead into a network oh yeah you can get in and pivot for sure yeah Um, so that lateral movement and i know we're using nerd terms to us they seem very uh, cool. <laughs> yes, I like to pivot in the network. <laughs> pivot. It's a beachhead that we pivot and begin to laterally probe the network. Yeah. Sometimes I even moonwalk on the network. <laughs> <laughs> but the bottom line is it lets us get in and look around and go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what all that means. Yep. So yeah, I, I personally, uh, you know, I I want the security of the cameras and I appreciate the security of the cameras, but I am constantly worried about and I haven't like segmented and all. I am so constantly worried about them. Yeah, it's just like when you and I go bar hopping, we walk into the bar, we look around like, oh, nothing here we want. Let's go to the next one. 
<laughs> <laughs> this one looks cool. We'll see here for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, geez, you're yeah, they're just doing that on your network. Yeah, that's essentially what's happening. They're just looking around at what all what the traffic is. If they can get in anywhere, it's like you left a door open in your house mm-hmm. and they just stand there and watch what's going on and you don't notice them. That's right. Until so, they find something interesting to go after. Yep. So don't get caught with your zipper down. That's the main. That's, that's the big gist. problem. <laughs> <laughs> which which brings us as another segue to our exchange issue where, again, lots of people caught with the zipper down. Uh-huh. So if you are not paying attention, which, I mean, I can't tell you the number of alerts. And, and to me, this is like everywhere. I'm sure many people, they're like, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. Like, you didn't see that? It's like I see, I saw it every, 15 times a day for the last couple of weeks. I guess that says a lot about the news I watch. But yeah, we saw it a lot. And, you know, we were asking lots of questions, which fortunately, none of our clients, we got everybody off of Exchange a while ago. So they're still using Microsoft. They're just not using a uh, hosted Exchange server yeah, that in-house. is connected to mm-hmm. the Internet. Yep. Which which was kind of shocking that one of our clients, I mean, I we came in as like the second or third IT company they had in a few years. I mean, they had like six employees in exchange server. Oh. I'm like, really? Jeez. Why? Why do you have an exchange server? And they're like, well, yeah. the last IT guy said we needed one. I'm like, for six people? No. Yeah, well, we know where the last IT guy got their experience. Yeah, that's like saying you're going to take your six people on a trip and so you go buy a bus <laughs> <laughs> a big deluxe bus yeah i'm yeah i'm buying a huge tour bus because yeah. i got six people i need to carry <laughs> one time <laughs> I, I know i was like Ugh. but you know it's the more complicated and complex these environments are the harder they are to protect oh yeah that's one of our uh, ways to make a data breach more expensive mm-hmm. Making it too complicate. Yep. Complicate. Complicate. <laughs> That's the new think, word for yeah, the day. I think the brain is winding on down now. If it is, I mean, part of what we do in our IT companies, we come in and we look at how can we simplify everything. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and I think uh, we never did this, but I honestly think that at some point in the past, IT companies were like, if we can make it super complicated, then people can't break into it. <laughs> <laughs> Which really means if we make it super complicated, nobody knows how to protect it. <laughs> well, you know, for the longest time, everybody thought, well, we'll just throw more technology at it. Mm-hmm. You know, and now it's, you know, that's not going to help. No, you want to. That's not going to help. You want to make it, you want to make your footprint, uh, i.e. your risk, uh-huh. as small as possible. I mean, we go in and we're like, do you need this software? Get rid of it. Do you need this software? Get rid of it. This junk sitting there on your computer, get rid of it. If you only Uh use it once a year, then install it when you need it and uninstall it. (laughs) Don't leave it sitting there because every single piece of software is yet another risk that you're taking that that software might get uh, breached or infected or something or used against you. I mean, make Uh, everything as small as you possibly can. Yeah, just keep getting smaller and smaller. And guess what? You won't be hit. Yes. So pencil and paper. (laughs) <laughs> so, if you're not listening to the whole exchange thing and you use email <laughs> and you haven't had anybody talked about uh, check on your email and you don't know for sure whether or not you use any kind of Microsoft Exchange server that needs to be looked at and you're in charge of anything remotely to do with running a business yeah. or security, ask somebody post haste. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if if you use email, mm-hmm. <laughs> I would go ahead and ask. Don't even assume. Just yeah. go ahead and ask. Do yeah. we use Microsoft and are we using an Exchange server? <laughs> yeah, that's connected to the internet in any way, you know, which yeah. is you know most likely if you're using it. So I, I and I was like totally surprised when I saw the announcement come out last week that said. You know, you don't, this thing is spreading so quickly. 
it is being the the hackers are using it so fast to get into these email accounts. Yet another reason not to have PHI in your email, mm-hmm. uh, even if it is uh, encrypted. Apparently, they're able to get the entire files this way. Well, I mean, just and, remember your email inbox is it's like your life. Like you can create a profile of anybody pretty much mm-hmm. by mm-hmm. by just going through their email. Oh, that's another rabbit hole. OSINT. Let's don't go down that rabbit hole this time. Yeah. I scared the mess out of somebody the other week. I did an OSINT um, presentation. Mm. And so I, I took, I did it to a, for a local rotary group and I took one person in the group. I took two pieces of public information that I knew about this person and created a profile using, you know, OSINT. And <laughs> it, you should have saw the faces of everybody in the presentation. They were like, Oh my goodness. You can get yeah. all that information just off of the person's name and a zip code. And yes, yes I, can I can get more if I really wanted to. Yeah. Cause I only did yeah. it. You know, I took a couple of hours to poke around if I would have took longer than that or had ill intent. Oh goodness. <laughs> yeah. If you were truly committed. Yes. I could have really messed them yeah. up. So <laughs> you have, uh, uh, an exchange server issue where they said you have hours, not days. And we know that some people take months to deal with these things. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I mean, if you're just now hearing about it, cause we know when this comes out, if you're just <laughs> hearing about it, you're, you're probably already in trouble Yeah, or you should already be taken care of. And you need to say, yay, thumbs up, gold star for whoever did it. <laughs> so there you go. We had uh, courts, cameras, cameras. And exchange. and exchange. See, always delivering. <laughs> <laughs> we said what we're going to do and we do what we said. There you go. <laughs> All right, folks. Remember to follow us and share us out on your favorite social media. Rate our podcast and y'all give us some reviews. Five stars only. Anything less than that. And you can go home. <laughs> <laughs> you clearly don't get it. And don't give us a good review and then give us four stars. <laughs> drives me nuts. Roro. It's, it's the person who's like, no one ever gets five stars. You can't possibly yeah. earn that. <laughs> I used to be that way. I used to I'm work not. at a place like that. It's like, yeah. you cannot do that well. <laughs> I know. I, that's what I learned. You know? Yeah. I'm like, well, why is a five star there if you can't attain it? <laughs> no. Right. All righty. All right. So thanks for listening and join us next week for another exciting episode. <laughs> <laughs> so remember for Donna and myself, HIPAA is not about compliance. It's about patient care. <laughs>